Hey, it's Joseph here. After a thorough testing and benchmarking, I have concluded that this desktop right here is no ordinary desktop. When you're looking for a good AEC performance machine, you'll be quite left confused as there are just so many options that are available. Should you buy a desktop or a laptop, workstation or performance gaming machine since they deliver performance as well? What should you buy? There's a lot of model names and model numbers. You probably don't know all of them and I frankly don't either. So you're going to be doing quite a lot of research and unfortunately there there are information that are quite misleading as well. And I think this is where Binbox has their value. This specific unit that I have here is called Striker 2, and it is one of the desktop models that they make. It will probably handle everything that you ask it to do. Everything from obviously the easy tasks to medium tasks and high-end tasks and even impossible tasks it will handle. And the reason why I say that is because there was one Revit task that I failed to do on any other machine that I have access to, yet this one was able to do it. And those of you who are BIM managers and Revit power users, you will know how binding a very large link file in Revit into your project can be quite a process. But then again, this machine was able to process that within 30 minutes or so, and I was rescued. And in terms of the overall look, it is looking quite nice, wouldn't you say? What is not to like about a simple metal box? It is very professional looking with no added flair and it demonstrates their philosophy of no time and energy wasted for the best performance possible. I was going to do a more general overview of the machine and perhaps show you some benchmarks that I have done, but after just running a couple of rounds of testing and benchmarks, I just realized how good of a machine this one is. It's kind of like introducing a modified sports car that's sitting in a showroom. You have to talk about the things that are under the hood. Modified to have different filter, exhaust, camshaft, and pistons. You have to talk about those things, right? So if you would allow me to geek out a bit, here it comes. So here is supposedly what's under the hood in the base system of Striker 2. Delitted Intel i9 9900K with all core overclock of 5.2 gigahertz to 5.3 gigahertz and 360 mil direct die custom cooling solution and EVGA GeForce RTX 3070 Super with 8 gigabytes of VRAM, 32 gigabytes of DDR4, 3600 megahertz RAM and then 5 500 gigabytes of Samsung 980 Pro NVMe drive and then high performance ASUS motherboard of course with Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and that is just the base system therefore they are going to cater whatever the customer needs in terms of the system configuration. Okay since we are talking about the parts that are inside the machine let's go ahead and talk about the case and inside of the machine. If I go ahead and turn it around, you can see that there are no ports. It's just the two giant fans from Noxua, which is quality stuff. And then you can open up the top actually. So you're gonna have to hold back here and then just pull hard. And the top panel is held by these four metal pins. And then that's where all the ports are going to reside. And let me just try to show you the top of it. So this is actually the top of the machine, which will be pretty much what it looks like usually behind the desktops. So you can see the power button and then USB-C port and then USB type A for the front IO and all the ports that are coming from the motherboard and the graphics card are going to be positioned back here or actually the top. And then there is the power supply. So you're gonna have to connect the long power cable that's included with this machine back here and then back out to the back. It's kind of confusing, I know. Anyways, I'm gonna have to remove the side panel, which is this one right here. So I'm gonna have to remove the three screws that are positioned here. Okay, well, I wanna show you that way, but I can't see, so I'm gonna turn it around.
and then you're gonna have to pull this quite hard and I don't want to do that on this desk so I'm gonna do that on the floor and come right back up so this is what the side panel looks like even the side panel is quite a hefty weight to it and since the side panel is off we can now see the inside and in terms of internal configuration, other than the fact that everything has been rotated 90 degrees, the most notable thing is actually the delitted CPU. The lid of the CPU, the flat metal portion of the CPU has been removed in order to have the maximum cooling capacity and performance. I personally would not attempt to delid a CPU, although I understand the performance gains, but that process is definitely needed if you want this amount of performance. And that is connected to the radiator that is mounted to the bottom of the case and three giant Noctua fans are actually blowing air out. If you know about computer parts, you'll know that they're not really messing about since they put five giant Noctua fans inside of the case. So when the computer is on, you can feel significant amount of air that is being moved to the floor of the case. So the overall airflow would be from the back going in and then cools all the components inside, including the graphics card. And then these fans will blow the air to the bottom, including the radiator that's connected to the CPU. And then the power supply is almost isolated it is to my surprise they are using SFX power supply from Corsair, 750 watts. They're not messing around, but I did not expect it to have the smaller SFX power supply. But that specific unit comes with nice braided cable, so that is all connected nicely inside. And then I can see the two HyperX RAMs that are in there. I think they were rated as 3600 megahertz. And if you also have a keen eye, you'll see that I actually have RTX 2070 instead of 3070 that I said it's going to have on the base system. And the reason for this is, so here is RTX 3070 that's sealed in the box. It's been quite difficult waiting for this moment as this box has been sitting there for days whilst I test this machine. So let's get it opened. If you know anything about graphics card, you know it is quite difficult to get your hands on on 30 series cards or any graphics card for that matter. Okay, so this graphics card is from EVGA and it is a typical brand that Bimbox uses. The thing about this plastic box is not necessarily a great unboxing experience, but but hey, product is what it matters, right? All right, let's have the camera focus on the graphics card and there is some peel to do as well. And then the center of the fan has peel. The EVGA logos have the peel on them as well. And then the back plate will have some peel. Remove protective film before use. Well, you gotta get rid of this, otherwise the graphics card will not be able to breathe as there is some perforations. Come on camera, focus on the graphics card, not me. Back of the graphics card also has some peel. And then we gotta get rid of this rubber, another rubber piece. Okay, now I gotta get graphics card off of this machine and then replace this. And then undo the PCIe cables. And then the motherboard would have a little latch. So push that and then pull. There it is, 2070. No back plate. Okay, time to put this in. It's a little bit easier if you're looking at it not from the side. Okay, that is in. And then put the screws back in. And then because this one used six pin PCIe cable, I'm gonna have to use this one up here and then undo the cable tie. So instead of six, it's gonna use eight pin PCIe cable, bottom on this one. 
okay? And then I gotta nicely clump up the cable ties. And then I do have cable tie. You're welcome, Bimbox. Okay, we are ready to go. And by the way, the RTX 3070 card was provided by Binbox to put it in this machine. They actually have stocks of 3070 card. They are impossible to get it out of the market right now, but because they're a system integrator who builds and make these computers, they actually have stocks of 3070. So if you order a PC from them, then you're gonna be able to get 3070 cards in your machine. And since we are talking about individual components here, I do want to take a little moment to appreciate how they haven't configured the machine with the server grade stuff, the ECC memory and quadro nonsense. I may be touching the danger zone here, but for typical AEC tasks that we do in terms of 3D modeling, Revit, BIM, CAD, do not require server grade components that are comparably a lot more expensive than regular consumer material. And frankly, they don't necessarily perform better than consumer level. Actually, they may perform less at times and that is really important when you're trying to make sure that no dime has been wasted in order to get the best performance. And here's another aspect to consider. Unfortunately, not many AEC tasks are multi-core based tasks, meaning the software we typically use in AEC industries such as AutoCAD or Revit, they don't necessarily send the tasks onto different cores of the CPU. Rather, they just line them up into a single core and then let that one core to carry out all the tasks that is necessary, which often creates bottleneck as you can think of. However, because we do range of tasks, you're gonna be printing PDF file from the project that you have been working on whilst flipping through a reference PDF that has hundreds of pages whilst unzipping a large project file that you have received from the consultant. And then you'll be doing renderings on the side for the final presentation packages. And then that package will be worked in InDesign. So you got range of software that are running on your system at one given moment. First of all, kudos to you doing all of those tasks and also the machine that is handling that. Often the machine is gonna have hard time keeping up with all the tasks that you are throwing at it, but this machine obviously is gonna be different from that. And in terms of the CPU performance, instead of it being boosted whenever all the tasks are coming in and trying to ramp up the speed to chew through the task that it is given at, it is locked at the high frequency, therefore it is going to be just ready to go at any given moment. It is sort of like revving your engine before the start line so that you are ready to go when that green light hits then you're gonna go with the high RPM. And I already have all the benchmark results in with the 2070 card. So since now I have equipped it with 3070 card, I'm gonna have to run some of the benchmarks and show it on the screen for you. Here are some of the benchmarks that I have done prior, but you will also see 3070 results because when I am editing, I'll be putting that on the screen as well. The first one that we wanna look at is the Binbox Revit benchmark they actually made their own benchmark system for Revit so this is what I have ran on different machines and this is a result and in terms of the numbers the lesser the better it is because it's a time that's taken to do the task so striker 2 is definitely ahead of everybody else and I assume it is not going to have as much difference between 2070 versus 3070 because it's not really a heavy graphics task However, I expect the results to have greater difference on the real-time rendering stuff. So for example, Enscape has this result, but I expect the 3070 to have better performance. Again, the shorter the better this graph is. And then you can also see that on Lumion benchmark, one thing to note is the fact that 2070 Super on Striker 2 stayed very close to my 2080 Super that's inside of Blue 5.0, which is my custom build PC. It is probably because of overclock that's already on 2070, therefore it is delivering a lot of performance to you. And then let's look at some V-Ray CPU benchmark. You can see the score here, it's just ahead of everybody else, and then in terms in terms of the GPU benchmark, 
you can see it is very comparable to the 2080 Super that I have inside of my custom build. And then if you look at the Blender CPU benchmark, you can see it is killing everybody else. And then on GPU, it is neck and neck with 2080 Super. And with the 3070, I'm gonna expect that it to be either slightly better or similar performance. And I also have MSI Combustor benchmark, which is a graphics card test and then you can see 3080 Super is ahead on this one. However, 2070 is not far from it. And then this is a 3070 result comparison to it. I personally prefer building my own machines because I like tinkering with my own machines. However, if you're needing to manage multiple machines at a firm or you simply don't have time or skills to do so, then you're gonna have to rely on computer manufacturer to provide you the best case scenario for you. And if that is the case, then Binbox got you covered. They actually have three year warranty on the Striker model. And every time I have spoken with them, it's been a pleasure. They are prompt and then they're very clear of their directions. Troubleshooting was quite easy as I was pushing this machine to its limits with all the benchmark and testing that I was doing. And their team is great at giving you the solution for it. So all in all, they really seem to care about all the AC professionals and obviously they deliver quality product. And as you know, architecture, engineering, and construction, the AEC industry requires a lot of performance in order to do their complex building stuff. So if you're needing this kind of machine, then do check them out. I'll leave a link in the description. Let them know that I have sent you their way. And I hope you have enjoyed this content. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel if you wanna continue watching these type of videos. Thank you so much for watching. As always, I'll see you next time.